Hey, Brian, what's up? Where's my story, Alexandra? Jesus, Brian, do you know where I am right now? You're in bumpfuck Nebraska. I don't know. I'm in Dallas, Brian. Dallas. The airport's bigger than Manhattan, apparently. Well, excuse me, cowgirl. I don't care where you are. Fact is, you have three weeks to get me your next story, and I've got the magazine, which pays good f***ing money to the both of us, by the way, chomping at my for the future you are contractually obligated to deliver. So, I'll ask again. Where's Chill my... Chill out, Brian. I've been distracted lately, and I don't want to talk about it. Alexandra, listen, I don't know why you're off dicking around in cowboy land right now, and frankly, I don't give a damn. But, if I don't have something to show on. Can you buy me some time? How long? A week. Christ, fine. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thanks, Brian. You're the best. Uh, listen, I uh, I have to go. I have to take another call. Alexander, hold. Hey, Liz. I'm on my way. Uh, I hope I'm not cutting it too close. The uh, security at LaGuardia was hell. Cutting it close? Is that supposed to be some kind of sick joke, Alex? Wait. What are you talking about? 
what am I talking about? He didn't, you know what, I can't do this. Ryan said I shouldn't call you, and he was right. I'm done. Don't call me again. Call you? You called me. I, I don't know why you're pissed at me, but can it wait until after the service? I'm, uh, uh how far away? Three minutes. I'm three minutes away. It's already over. Alex. What? Wait, what? What are you ta- what? What are you talking about? The funeral's already over. Dad's under six feet of dirt, and he has been for two days. Two days? But you, you told me that- That I'm sure a big city journalist girl, like yourself, had more important things to do. Some hot new story, or hot new guy, or- is it girls now? I forget. Lizzie! I... Uh. No, don't. Save your breath. I don't need to hear your excuses. The funeral's over. Go home. Um, the house. Um, Dad's house. Let me, uh, uh, help me. Let, let, let me help you. Like, pack up? Please? Already done. We just finished up this morning. There's just a few boxes of junk left in his study. All of his manuscripts and notes have been donated back to the Chronicle. There wasn't much else. Dad kind of lost it towards the end. He's been in and out of rehab a dozen times in the last couple of years. But you didn't know that, did you, Alex? Dad was an alcoholic, and that's probably what killed him. But you wouldn't know because you never call. Because you're too good for us now, Alexandra. You always were. Lizzie, I never thought that. He talked about you all the time, you know? How ungrateful you were. After everything he did for you, you land that big magazine job and help on the next plane to New York without even a goodbye or a thank you. Liz, I had to start immediately, and I called as soon as I got there. Enough. Enough excuses. I don't care. Did, um... Did... Did Daddy really say those things? He said... He said he was disappointed in you. <laughs> Goodbye, Alex. Don't try and call me back. I want to answer. Ma'am, we're here. Excuse me, miss? Miss? Is this not the right location? What? I mean, yes, it is. It, it, it is. Um, can you, um, can you, uh, take me here? I'll, uh, I'll tip double. Yes, ma'am.
Good evening, miss. Never did get into the 21st century, did you, Dad? This is Arthur C. Bennett. Today is October 15th, 1978, and the time is 7.52 p.m. I am in the Wild Cactus Saloon in Terra Lingua, about as far west as you can get without being a Mexican. I've got a cold Lone Star, a fresh pack of smokes, and the whole night ahead of me. What about you, sir? Me? No one else here? You have me as long as you want. I mean, I have a story to tell, and I intend to tell it all. And tell it you will. What's your name? You know my name. It's full of tape. Oh. Uh, of course. Um, Mario. Mario Cuevas. <clears throat> Thanks, Mario. Now, you're a resident of this so-called ghost town, yes? 
I have been all my life, yes. Except for the few years I went to college uh, up in Alpine, uh, right up the road. Terra Lingua. What does it mean? What, what? Nobody knows really. Uh, some say it's an Apache word. You know, they've been here long before the mines. Um, but some, they, some call it the Tres Lenguas, or it's the three tongues. Tres Lenguas, that's what it is. But I, I don't think so real for me. I don't know about that. Terra Lingua. The language of the earth. Stop. Now, in the letter you sent to me, you said you saw something very strange out in the desert. What did you call them? Lights? Uh, Las Luces Fantasmas. Ghost lights. Before you paint me as some superstitious Mexican, you ought to know something. Now, now I wouldn't come all the way out here just to do that. But, but what should I know? I'm not the only one that's seen the lights. My family, everybody here. And if you stay here long enough, you will see the lights too. In fact, I know you will. Tell me about your family. Well, we were poor. My father's parents were farm laborers in the Mexican village of Ojinaga. My father was a strong, hardworking man, man of faith. 1920s, the mining operation really started booming, you know. Cinema, they called it. The Red Rock used to, to make mercury. Poor Mexican could make a good wage. Chipping away down the mines, you know. When word reached Ohinaga, my father packed up me, my mother, my two brothers, and hauled us across the desert all the way to Telingua. It was an amazing sight to me. I mean, men white, brown, black, all strong, full of fire like my father bored holes into the earth. An army of human ants. All this I saw with wonders in my eyes. Uh, it was a magical moment for me. Mr. Cuevas, have you ever considered becoming a writer? Because you'd make a damn good one. I don't know about that. When did you first see the light? Well, I was about 10 years old. Our cabin. It was built by my father's own hands, just sat beside the edge of the village, facing the mines. I remember I was sleeping when I was suddenly awoken by a bright light. I mean, it must have been like right outside the window because the light was so blinding. I remember thinking how strange it was because the light didn't even cast a shadow. And it seemed like it was an eternity, but it was perhaps only seconds in a flash. The light was gone. Ran to the window to go look, and 
And there it was. A bright, glowing ball just hovering over like just 20 feet off the ground. And it was blue, and then went to red, and then green, and then quicker than you could blink, it was hovering over the Jesus Mountains. And then just like that, it vanished, I mean, just right into the night. Did you tell anyone? Mm, no. Why? Because people disappear when they get too close to the lights. October 15th, 10 p.m., Wild Cactus Saloon, Terra Lingua. I'm here with Mario Cuevas. I've got a fresh Lone Star, and Mario's got another hot cup of joe. Mario, how you feeling? I'm good. How are you, Mr. Bennett? Please, call me Art. And I'm intrigued. That's how I am. Now, when we last left off, you said that you saw these ghost lights as a kid, how they didn't cast a shadow. That they, they blasted off over the Chizo, some 30 miles away in a fraction of a second. Now you said... Yeah, some disappear when they get too close to the lights, yes. But you didn't disappear. No, I did not. Now, you also told me that people have been seeing these lights for years, generations even. But does anyone have any idea of what these lights are? Well, the name should give you a clue. Some say that the lights are the dead spirits of the Apache warriors. Uh, Chisos Apaches were the original inhabitant of this valley. Chifosante was a great warrior and his band was captured and ultimately executed at Ojinaga. Some legends say that the lights are fires lit by a spirit, leading the lost people home. And others say the lights are the spirit of the Indian himself. Do you know what Chisos means? I do not. It's Apache, meaning ghost. And there are other stories. Some say the lights are bursts of gas, saying almost fire, escaping from the mines and igniting to the dry desert sky. But that doesn't make sense to me. Because I've seen the mine gas light up and burn. It's bright, and it's hot, and it's gone just like that. 
doesn't stick around like the lights do. Other stories? Let me see. I once met an old airman from the base in Marfa who told me that he was sure that Nazis were flying over the Mexican border, spying on the American citizens. That they were developing some secret uh, advanced airship that would zip around in impossible speed and then vanish into the sky, just like that. Now, don't you think that we would know that the Germans have that kind of edge on us? And this was in the 40s, during the war. <clears throat> no, that didn't make sense either to me. And of course, there's that more recent idea. Little green men? Or something like them. Well, what do you think they are? Mario? Well, my mother had an idea. She was very reluctant to talk about the lights. You see, she was that superstitious Mexican. I think she felt that talking about the lights gave them power. For years, my brothers and I prodded her. And always she would change the subject or find something to occupy us so we would give it up. But finally, finally one night she gave in, and I remember it vividly. She looked at all three of us, very serious, and said, hijos, those lights are not to be messed with. Son peligrosos. They're dangerous. What are they? We asked. Bruhas, she snapped. Witches. Now. Now, you said that when people get too close to the lights, you said they disappear. How do you know that? Because my father was one. Still kicking, Senor Mario? <laughs> Alexandra. Brian, just shut up for a second. What? Hold on. Seriously, just... for once, just shut up. I have my story for the magazine. Wait, what? Really? You'll have it by the end of the week. That's great. What's the... Bigger than a toe to go. Well, what do you do? Let's do it. Because I really want to.
<laughs> Daddy, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I know you're disappointed in me, but I'm I'm gonna try to be the daughter you deserve. You started this story, so I'm gonna finish it. All right, this is Arthur C. Bennett. I am here with my good pal, Mario Cuevas. Uh, it is October 15th, 1978. The time is 11.13 p.m. I am on my third Lone Star, my fifth cigarette. And I must say that coffee you're sipping on is starting to look mighty nice. Mm. I make better. I'm sure you do. Now, Mario, all levity aside, you just told me something rather serious. Your father... Disappeared, yes. Now, please don't take offense to my next question, but is it possible that he just skipped town, hitchhiked his way out of Dodge? I mean, minor life couldn't have been all campfires and marshmallows. No. I don't take offense. And yes, you have every right to ask that question. But honestly, I have to say no. My father, Renaldo was his name, loved his family more than anything else. And on top of that, he loved his work, no matter what the job was, because it brought life to his family. So I know he wouldn't have left us, at least not on his own will. Maybe it was an accident. Ronaldo fell down a mine shaft and nobody saw. Hmm. Another valid question. Very possible. But still, I don't think this is the case. My father was very careful. Plus, at this time, we were in Delingo for over 10 years now. My father knew Delingo like the back of his hand. And he could navigate the mines blindfolded if he had to. Did anyone have beef with your father? Someone that might have wanted him gone? Once more, you have smart questions. But Arthur, you're missing the point I'm trying to make here. That now do I'll ask you again, Arthur. What did you see? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Give him more. Yeah. 
What do you want with me? I don't know anything. I don't remember anything. Now, Mr. Bennett, we know that that's not true. We know for a fact you spoke extensively with a Mr. Mario Cuevas back in 1978. And we know every detail of those conversations. Mario? He was most cooperative. With a little friendly persuasion, of course. Don't tell them. I'm afraid he already did. Alex. What was that, Mr. Bennett? Uh, uh. Alex. Don't tell them anything. Are you a father, aren't you? A father? No, I'm not. Though I can't say I rule it out. Neither. Not that I didn't desire it. But I made a point to avoid it. And maybe I suffer from it. I guess I assumed that one day, like my father, I would go missing too. And I wouldn't wish that upon any other child, what I went through. Not anything in the world. Okay, now Mario, when you say... When you say disappeared, what do you actually mean? I mean disappear. Vanish. No mas. Tapes, Alexandra. We know you have them. We will be waiting. And we will find you. You must sleep.
We do not flee. Terralingo, Texas, October 15th, it is just about midnight. I have foregone another Lone Star in lieu of that good black coffee that Mario has been sipping on. You need a refill, Mario? No, I'm okay. Maybe a tequila. As much as I like to, Art. I don't want you or anyone listening to think I'm telling tall tales. Okay, you mean to say you actually believe that people disappear, that they vanish when you see the lights? I think I already said I did. Okay. Mario, I didn't mean... You know, it's not a question of belief. Okay? I saw it. Others too. In fact, it's been happening for generations. But nobody talks about it. But you know, people go missing here all the time. You could walk a hundred miles into a desert and not run into one soul. So it's easy to say that someone got lost or they, they fell down some uh, mine shaft. But the locals know people have been disappearing here for hundreds of years, maybe longer. And it's because of those lights. Art, right, why did you come out here? Huh? If you're so skeptical, why did you come all the way here? Your father. Tell me what happened. <clears throat> it was 1940. I was 17 and just started working in the mines myself. I worked in the sulfur mines. It was awful, awful, grueling work. 18 hours a day, sometimes. 200 feet underground. No light but the dim glow of our headlamps. The choking fumes and the stench like rotten eggs. I will admit, I was more than ready to blow some steam at the end of the week. Mezcal was our poison stronger than bourbon, homemade by the men in the camp. Saturday was the unit shift break. There was that one such Saturday that summer. I remember clearly that sun just stepped under the horizon and the desert was that unearthly wash of blue accented by the last red shimmers of the dying sunlight. That blood draining from the rocks. We had just sat down on a large boulder and begun to pass the bottle around. And then a shout went up from the direction of the mines. A man I recognized stood gaping and pointed at the sky. And we all looked, though most of us knew what to expect. But that night, None of us were prepared. I mean, the lights, more than a dozen of them, all different shades and colors, hovered not far off in the distance. Several other men emerged from the mines, beckoned by the shouts of the man. But now he was silent. And we all were. I mean, we couldn't move or speak. I managed to glance down. Among the group of the men stood my father. Father! I wanted to scream, Papa, go there, run! But I could not. And as if hypnotized, the men walked slowly towards the lights. And the lights seemed to grow larger and brighter. 
I wanted to run and grab my phone. I wanted to run with him. Away from the lights, away from the mines, away from the cursed land! I... Arthur, you're not going anywhere until you talk to us. Tell us what happened. What did you see? Who are you? What do you mean? Out in the desert, in Terlingua, what did you see? I don't, I told you I don't know what you're talking about. I've never been to Terlingua. I've never been there. Now let me go! <laughs>
Well, it's well past midnight now. Do bars even close around these parts, Mario? Just gonna enforce it. I suppose you're right. So, what happened next? What happened next? When the sun rose and my father and six men were nowhere to be found. The four men began an inquiry immediately and a search party was sent into the mines to search for the bodies. And of course, they wouldn't find any. And then they showed up. Who? I don't know, really. I, I, I guess we thought they were like government men. They were all in black. Uh, black suits, black cars. We can see their eyes. But how did they know when to come? Why did they care? Seven Mexicans missing in a night. It's hardly the concern of the government, especially back then. And there was something strange about them. I mean, even right now, something was off and... What did they do? Why are you afraid? Well, well they took us, me, the other men uh, that witnessed the lights. They put us in the back of a black truck. No uh, seat, no window. And then we just drove. I mean, it seemed like hours and hours to drive. And then when, they, when we did stop, one of the men came out, opened the door, and it was night again. And I remember we were just in front of this, this big hangar. Did you know where you were? At the time, no. But later I realized that we were just right outside Marfa, only two hours away from the Lingua. They have an army base up there, right outside of So they were government men, the CIA maybe. Oh, we saw soldiers. But they were afraid, but they were taking orders from them, like without no, any questions. And then they took each one of us, one by one, inside the hangar, in this dark room. What happened next, Mario? Mario.
Arthur C. Bennett here. It is. God, I don't know what time. I sent Mario home. Poor fellow is worn out. Such a strange tale. I don't know what I expected. I mean, a man contacts you and says he sees strange lights in the desert. And you drive 600 miles to the very ends of the earth to hear about it in person? And why did I come all the way out here? It's this place. It's like a magnet. Ever since Mario contacted me, it's been... It's been tugging on me like a hook in my gut. Terra Lingua. Terra Lingua. The name feels odd in the mouth. Like... choking on a clam or... swallowing your chewing tobacco. Sitting here. No city lights polluting my view. I behold a strange Martian landscape. The phantom silhouettes of the Chisos form a cocoon around the valley. And above them, a dizzying sea of stars brighter than I have ever or will ever see again. It truly feels like the very ends of the earth. Mario has agreed to meet me one more time. After he's had a few hours to sleep, of course. Honestly, I should be doing the same back in the motel, but I just can't. I don't know, listening to Mario's story, it's... It stirred something in me. I need to talk to Mario one more time. I need to ask him one more question. Oh, one more thing. It's a strange thing, really. I didn't mention it to Mario, it just didn't seem relevant at the time, but... On my way here, I... I feel crazy saying this, but... I believe I've seen a woman. Now, at first I thought she was following me, but... It's become apparent that... She is not really there. I believe she's seen me too.
that you? Arthur! Excuse me, sir. Do you know Mario Cuevas? He used to live here. I, I think he still lives here now. He must be in his 80s in, or, or 90s by now. Do you know where I can find him? My father used to know him years ago before I was, before I was born. I, I need to speak with him. Mario Cuevas? You just missed him. Oh, that's great. Is he nearby?
Guess I was too late, Mario. Mario, back so soon? I couldn't sleep. Yeah, neither could I. Sora, what did you want to ask me? Mario, there's something strange going on. How's that? I mean, ever since you contacted me, Ever since I took that god-awful long drive up from Dallas to this far-flung patch of dust, I've had this crazy feeling that, that I'm being watched. And I'm being followed. I feel crazy saying it, but I keep seeing this. Yes, sir? I have this feeling stirring up in me. It's like this itch I can't scratch. It's like I just need a good hit of nicotine, but nothing quite cuts it. You want to see the lights? Yes. Yes, that's it. Well, Art, my friend, Call you my friend, right? Yeah. Art, I know what you're feeling because I felt it too. It's like a, like a craving. You know, like a, like a magnet, or being in the gravity of a giant black star, and you feel like you can't fight it. You can. I have. But that's a very dangerous thing you ask. Mario, I'm not asking you to follow me. I just need to know what it look. Tell my story. And that's what I intended to do. All right, I know I know how you're feeling. I know that burning feeling inside your head. It's maddening. And it's only going to get worse. What is it? It's the lights, Arthur. It's the lights. I'm afraid you're right. You know, for you, there's no turning back. Bad things happen to those who chase lights. How, Mario? How can I see them? sunrise. Mario has gone home and I'm alone. Mario has told me how to see the lights and he's told me where to go. 
And I'm going there now. At the back of the cemetery, there's a small gate which opens to a rocky path. Follow that path. Follow that path until you come to an old mine. See you real soon. 